Well, welcome to the Wednesday Word. <laughs> All you snow bunnies and those that are surviving the blackouts. Here we are. Winter Wonderland, Abundant Life Sanctuary, friends, family, Romans, and countrymen, we have survived yet another uh, out of service, online only, and we're getting used to this. I sincerely regret it. We uh, really and truly wish we could be in service tonight. We're actually missing our business evening, uh, business meeting this evening, and uh, are having to uh, schedule that for next week. Our CPA cannot be here. So tonight we're going to have in-person service. We're going to climb dense and we're looking forward to a word from the Lord. Just want to remind you all the events this week, we're going to actually take those events and throw them into next week, uh, the things that we had scheduled. So uh, actually starting Saturday, the 20th, this Saturday, I remember is two, Saturday the 20th at two o'clock, we're going to have a great time with our ushers and hostess just uh, hostess and usher appreciation dinner and we're looking forward to that being uh, with each and every one if you've ever served as a hostess or an usher have any interest in it at all come bring your spouse we're going to buy you dinner at saltgrass two o'clock this saturday and then sunday another great time we're going to make up for all the time we've had to spend in the house by getting together uh, after the sunday morning service at 10 30 then three o'clock in the afternoon we'll go back to our master class our chef, Justin Ward, who is also um, an aim worker from Paris, France. So he'll be with us at three o'clock for, for the uh, the actual uh, dinner uh, preparation and for the class. And then at six o'clock for the actual dinner where we'll all come together, have a little, little fun, end up our family life week and have a great time together. So we're looking forward to that being with y'all. Uh, just letting us come together in unity of spirit and faith as a family and see what God has. I didn't realize that Justin Ward is actually a, a little bit of a celebrity. The, the Masterclass Chef Baking Series, he actually appeared on there as one of the ghost chefs in prepping and uh, bringing things together. So he has a great, great background. If you enjoy uh, baking, cooking, and learning it from a true French chef trained uh, over in France, you'll want to do that this Sunday. So we're looking forward to a great time. Right now, we just want to say, take a moment and say a prayer for all of those needs uh, that are coming in right now. Those needs are on our prayer list. Those that have listed in their um, in the comment section. Let's remember each of those as we go into the message today. Would you just whisper a prayer under your breath that God would meet these needs? Touch. We thank Him for keeping us all safe. Uh, those that have survived the blackout, those that have survived uh, the freeze, and we pray that you are well this evening. Right now, we're going to go to Evangelist Doug Kleindienz, and he's going to bring a word from the Lord for us. Uh, there's three things that will survive and never change. One is the word. The other is the name. And number three is the blood. The book of Isaiah. 
chapter number 53, verse number 4, 5, and 6. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray, and have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. I would like to uh, connect with that today, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes made afar off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. I'm preaching to you today, there's power in the blood. There's power in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, we are a people who believe. We believe in the whole counsel of the Word of God. We believe in signs and wonders and miracles and supernatural interventions by the hand of the Almighty. I have been blessed in my lifetime to see many, many miracles of the Lord take place. I've seen the glorious hand of God intervene, as you have, into the affairs of men. We believe in the gifts of the Spirit and have witnessed it often. We believe in utterances of prophecy, prophetic declarations. We believe in uh, the gift of tongues and interpretation. We believe in the gifts of healing and the power of miracles to restore the human body and to bring restoration into our lives. We know that God can reveal things to us through words of knowledge and words of wisdom, discerning of spirits. We, we trust and believe in these things. We believe very powerful in the miracles and healings that God can bring us out of sickness and disease and difficulty. We, we believe in the anointing, the anointing of the Lord, that powerful uh, empowerment that comes from God upon a man or a woman. As we do the work of the Lord, the anointing empowers us to be a witness, empowers us to be a minister of the gospel, empowers us to be a light shining in the darkness of this world. It empowers us to be the salt that has not lost its savor. It is the anointing that enables us to do whatever it is we do in the kingdom and for the Lord. It's the anointing that destroys the yokes. It's the anointing that breaks the chains. It's the anointing of God that gives us victory. We believe in the power of deliverance, that we believe that every chain can break, that every sin and every addiction can be vanquished. We we believe that the, the power of God can bring you out, as we used to sing, out of the miry clay and put your feet upon a rock to stay. We believe in the delivering power, no matter how much darkness, no matter how thick the chains, no matter how deep into uh, sin that you, the quicksand of sin you may have gone, he will bring you out. There is power of God to deliver, not just to deliver you, not just to bring you out, but then also to put his favor upon you and his grace upon you. So you're not only just delivered, but then you become successful and elevated and Lord's favor comes on your life and you begin to have opportunities and doorways begin to open up to you. We believe in angelic visitations that the angels of the Lord are encamped around about them that fear God. We believe messenger angels come and we believe in the warring angels of the Lord that go to battle on behalf of God's people. We believe in the hedge that is put around about our lives and the angels of the Lord that are part of that hedge. We believe in all of these miraculous divine attributes of God. We believe in all the power and the passion of Pentecost, the joy that is unspeakable and full of glory, the peace that passes understanding, that peace of God that is that comes to our heart when you can't find it anywhere else. You find it in the Lord Jesus Christ. All of these benefits, all of these blessings, all that we could uh, talk about these and so many more, the blessings of living for God, the benefits of being 
being a Christian, all the miracles and wonders and supernatural interventions and the directing hand of God that leads and guides us, the still small voice of the Lord that speaks to us, all the times we've been healed and delivered and set free and we've seen the miracle of God's provision. I want you to know today that all of it, all of it and everything else is all made possible because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was the blood shed on the old rugged cross that makes everything, all the wonderful power even of this resurrection morning, it's what makes it all powerful. It is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that gained us access, that brought us salvation and made everything possible. The significance of the blood of Jesus is fundamental to the Christian faith. Our faith in Christ is firmly established and deeply rooted in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So a simple, basic overview of the Christian faith might be understood this way. Romans 5, 8, and 9, But God commended His love toward us in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. It was the story of Adam in the garden that set all of this in motion, that brings us to the love of Christ through the shedding of his blood that has saved us. Because Adam was first created in the image of God. He was without sin. He was placed in garden's paradise, the garden paradise of Eden. It's the story of, of Adam and a uh, second Adam, the first Adam and the last Adam. And it summarizes our very belief of the salvation message. Romans 5.12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death came by sin. So death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. That is the story of Adam's failure, the eating of the forbidden fruit, the disobedience to the command of God. And because of this one man, he brought sin into the world, and then sin passed upon all. You get down to verse number 19. In Romans 5, and it continues to summarize the story. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did the much more abound. That as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. It is showing you the two dimensions, showing you the two sides. On the one hand, Adam and his disobedience brings sin into the world. By that disobedience, all were made sinners. By the law coming, pointing out the offenses abounded. The failures of man were exemplified and were magnified. And we see all that. But then there's another part of the story. And that's the last Adam. That's the entrance of the Lord Jesus Christ. And just as by one man sin entered by another sent from God, another come down from heaven through his victory, through the death, burial, and resurrection, he was able to bring grace. In the Bible, uh, we all love this verse so much, where sin abounded, where, where sin was rampant, where sin uh, was uh, on open display. Grace does and did the much more abound. The power of salvation is a greater message than the power of sin. It is the message of righteousness and eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. There's power in the blood. The old hymnal we used to sing out of carried a glorious song. Its verses said, Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you or evil the victory win? There's wonder working power in the blood. Oh, there's power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There's power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Don't you know there's power in the blood? There's power in the blood today. The message of Christianity is simply this. If you want to know what's this Christian faith really all about, here's the message. Whatever sins you have committed, 
However, however deeply you may have fallen, however much darkness you may be in, however thick the chains of bondage may be in your life, there's power in the blood of Jesus to forgive you of your most horrible sin. There's power in the blood of Jesus to bring you out of the darkest of nights. There's power in the blood of Jesus to break the thickest of chains. There's power in the blood. Maybe here I'll quote the words of another sacred hymn we used to sing. It says, years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary, at Calvary. Oh, thank God for the blood. Thank God for Calvary's cross. The message of the cross today is one of power, one of deliverance, and one of salvation. It was a brutal, horrible uh, injustice upon the Lord Jesus Christ. He was marred more than any man. The stripes upon his back, the nails in his hands, the crown of thorns upon his head, the nails in his feet. He was hung up to die. And it was a very serious injustice upon the mighty God of heaven. But he said, this is why I came. Because in that death, that burial, and ultimate resurrection, he was able to lead captivity captive. He was able to get the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And today we have a message of grace and a message of salvation because of it. And drops of blood at the foot of the old rugged cross exclaim to all the ages, you can find freedom. You can find liberty here. You can find deliverance here. You can be set free here. There's hope here. There's help here. There is a way through and there is a way out. Um, the old, the, the, the old testament carries the fundamental doctrine and deep uh, theology concerning the blood. And as you look to the blood, you'll see that's working in the Old Testament as it lays groundwork and foundation for what the blood would do in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, they had the tabernacle in the wilderness, which was a shadow of the cross and things to come. And that as you would enter into the outer courts, the first thing you would come to would be the altar of sacrifice. There on that altar, they would place the animal, and the animal's uh, blood would be shed. That was the place of death and dying. And then from there, the priest would go to the brazen uh, labor, and there he would wash, and the blood and the water would mix together. And he would wash, and there would be a cleansing there. And then he would go from there into the tabernacle, into the worship, and there would be, the, of course, the, the candlesticks and the table of shoe bread and the altar of incense. And just behind that would be that veil. He would enter in behind the veil into the holy place. He would shed that blood upon the mercy seat. The fire of God would fall down and consume the sacrifice and atonement would be made for their sins. And all of that is a shadow of things to come. It's the schoolmaster to lead us to our New Testament salvation. Because as soon as you get over into the New Testament, you start seeing the, the New Testament church being born. We see God's work of the new covenant. And you can find it in Acts chapter 2. It begins and tells us that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. A, a beautiful, glorious outpouring of the Spirit of God into the heart of men and women. There was people there from everywhere, from all over uh, the area and from other places, and they were astounded at this. They were confounded to the point that they would say, what does this mean? What meaneth this? And then the apostle Peter would step forth with the apostle standing beside him and begin to preach to them. He would make them understand they were guilty of shedding the blood of Jesus Christ. He would let them know they were guilty of crucifying the Lord of glory. Let me tell you, he laid it on pretty thick. He didn't uh, hold back. He, he preached it strong. He preached it straight. And he let them know you have crucified the Lord of glory. He brought it so strongly till we see their response and their question. You pick it up in Acts chapter 2, verse number 37 and 38. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, convicted, struck in their heart. They said unto Peter, 
and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This was a beautiful uh, plan of salvation that was laid out. And it was laid perfectly like a template over that Old Testament tabernacle that was the schoolmaster in the shadow of things to come. For when the Apostle Peter said, you must repent of your sins, it was basically like that priest going to that brazen altar on his first stop. It was there that the animal died, and it is that repentance that we die out, we lay ourselves down, and we present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. We lay our motives down. We die out to our own ambition. We turn around from our worldly life and decide to live for God. Repentance is our death on that altar. Then the Apostle Peter said you need to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of those sins. That is just like that priest going to that brazen labor and there the blood and the water would mix together and there would be a washing and a cleansing. And then just as that priest would go into the holy place and the fire would fall, the Apostle Peter said that you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And that baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire is just like the fire falling on the sacrifice in the holy place. Place, it falls into our heart, the sanctuary of our soul, and we are filled with the Holy Ghost. So you can see repentance as the altar of sacrifice and baptism as the brazen labor, and then the infilling of the Holy Ghost as that bloodshed on the mercy seat and the fire of God falling. Uh, that beautiful Old Testament schoolmaster has brought us to a beautiful New Testament salvation. One of the many reasons that we call the name of Jesus at water baptism is because we need the blood to come. If you remember when that priest was there washing at the labor, the blood and water would mix. When we go to the waters of baptism, our brazen labor experience, we need the blood there. And what brings the blood is the name of Jesus. You can determine this from Acts 5, 28, after Peter and John had gone to the temple and the lame man was healed in Acts 3. By the time you get over here to Acts chapter 5, they're calling them in before the magistrates for an examination. And they said, did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in his name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Now those heathen magistrates did not want the blood of Jesus on them, and they connected it to the preaching of his name. When you speak his name, when you preach his name, you bring his blood. But we want the blood on us, and that's why in the baptistry, the minister will call the name of Jesus, and that will bring the blood mixing with the water, and we are cleansed. It is a beautiful New Testament salvation. Another prominent Old Testament doctrine was the celebration of the Passover. In this case, Moses instructed them to take the blood of the lamb and spread it on the three sides of the doorpost. And he gave them the promise in Exodus 12, 23, For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he seeth the blood on the lintel, on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door, and will not suffer the destroyer to come into your houses and to smite you. This is very exciting for the New Testament Christian. John 10.10 10 says, The thief cometh not for to steal, kill, and destroy, but I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Just like in that day, there was a death angel that would pass through. In our day, there's a thief that comes. He comes to kill, to steal, to destroy. He comes to bring death and dying and damnation. But when the blood is shed over the doorposts of our heart, he must pass over. Amen. He must pass over our house. He must pass over our soul. Because the blood is on our lives through water baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Another interesting part of that story is the Israelites were instructed to stay inside the house until morning. As long as they were inside, as long as they were under the blood, as long as they were behind the blood, they were safe. I would admonish you today and encourage you to stay under the blood. As judgment comes upon the world that we live in, as wickedness gets greater and greater, we as Christians need to remember there's power in the blood and there's promise 
in the Passover. Romans 5, 8 said that God commended His love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The blood has already been shed. The opportunity has already been granted. We can be saved. The old church used to encourage a practice called pleading the blood. What does it actually mean to plead the blood? It means to invoke, to request, to ask for. When we plead the blood, we are literally calling upon the entire force of the death burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, including the stripes that were on his back, the nails in his hands and feet, the crown of thorns that was upon his head. We release all of that against our adversary when we plead the blood. Whatever your situation is, whatever trial you find yourself in, whatever battle you may be fighting, there's power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. He paid the price already for every failure. He's paid the price for every mistake. The timeless hymn, we used to sing it with so much hope. When gloom and sadness whisper, you've sinned, no use to pray. I look away to Jesus and he tells me to say, I see a crimson stream of blood. It flows from Calvary. Its waves which reach the throne of God are sweeping over me. Yes, there's power in the blood. It's the great message of the gospel. The price has been paid. Freedom has been purchased. The blood has been shed. The captives can go free. Oh, it's the blood, my friend. It was that Calvary's cross of, of death and dying that gave way to the victory we feel on this resurrection Sunday morning. The blood will wash away your sins no matter how dark they may be. The blood will protect you from evil, from terrorism and fear. The blood will cleanse your conscience and you go to the waters of baptism for that to take place. The blood bought the church and it's now built upon a rock. The blood heals us from sickness and disease by the stripes upon his back. The blood blood gives us power to overcome the devil and the world. My brothers and sisters, it's the blood that gives us access to this victory today. Hebrews 10, 19 says, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. It's the blood that gives us access to this victory, to the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, to the glory of the resurrection. Strangers can come. Those with no hope can come. Those who are far away from the faith can come. Those who have never Never known God can come. Those who have backslid away from God, the prodigals can come home. There's power in the blood. If there's anything that has you bound, just ask for the blood of Jesus Christ to set you free. If the battle in your life is strong, pray for the blood of Jesus to vanquish every evil force. It's against every force of hell. You will be set free. The blood was shed that you and I could enjoy victory. The blood was shed so that we could boldly prepare claim no weapon that is formed against us can prosper. The blood was shed so that no addiction or problem or situation could ever hold us captive. I counsel you today, call upon his name, ask for his help, cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. The power of the gospel, the power of the resurrection, the resurrection power is there because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. He died he was buried, and he rose again the third day. That resurrection power was purchased by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ for every one of us. I want to pray with us as we get ready to conclude our message today. Father, I pray that you would touch every soul listening to this broadcast, listening to this video. Let us be reminded today, O oh God, that there's power in your blood. There's power in the blood you shed at the old rugged cross. I pray and I plead the blood of Jesus over every listener right now. Every prodigal and backslider that's a long way from the Lord. Every lost sheep that has wandered. Every prodigal son that has strayed. Every lost coin of value that is lost in the house. I plead the blood of Jesus over your life. I speak that the name of Jesus will break every chain of bondage in your life. I release you. I loose you through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the power of the blood of the Lamb. Wherever you are right now, lift your voice. Lift your voice in prayer. Call upon him. Thank God for the blood. Thank him. So thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. 
that washes me. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of the Lamb.